They say that eyes can tell the story of a person's life. If that is true, then my eyes would not have a beginning or an end. My eyes would tell the story of a circular journey, a cycling motion that at times feels shackling, restricting, discouraging. Yet if I look closely, there is a difference, an expansion outward. There is growth there, but I have to know where to look. My eyes would tell the story of pain and trauma, of being stalked and abused, of courtrooms, imprisonment, in my own home and in my own space, being violated in more ways than one. My eyes would tell the story of intrusion, of being sucked dry and allowing people to take pieces of me, little by little, until I was almost gone. My eyes would tell the story of eventually seeing that. But to really see me, I must go beyond my eyes to my nose. My nose tells the story of drastic change. My nose tells the story of its bridgeless existence for many years, struggling to hold up the glasses that would allow me to see clearly. I look at my nose now, compared to then, and it is much smaller and I wonder why. Maybe my need to see clearly is not so dependent on eyesight anymore. Then there is my mouth, my tiny mouth that often defaults into a frown. My mouth would tell the story of my mom pushing it up into a smile as a child to help me look happy. My mouth would also tell the story of constant pain and of being controlled and confined through braces, headgears, retainers, teeth pulling and gum grafts. My mouth, the center of my voice and self-expression, would tell the story of its continued healing. But the one part of my face that began my identity formation was my mole, that significant black dot above my upper lip. My mole would tell the story of how, at age five, I believed it was the sole reason I was Asian. My mole would tell the story of how I wished it to disappear so I could be like Snow White. But now, as my face continues to change, losing the chubbiness associated with adolescence and youth, and as tiny freckles start to appear to show maturity, and as the frizziness of my hair settles and gray strands appear, I look into my reflection and I see that where I used to feel controlled and helpless, buried deep is strength that tries to surface. And knowing that it is there, even when I cannot seem to find it, liberates me.